My name is Jacob Cloud and I am the Northeast Regional uh, Coordinator for New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. And I handle a whole bunch of things. And I'm here with my co-host, Maya yes, Tatum, so who introduced us as well. Yes, so I am I am the immediate past chair of SSDP. I am an alumni of the Arizona State University chapter of SSDP, where I was the president. And now I'm just a lovely board of director on the board, so yes. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Yeah, and today, so basically today we'll be talking with the Board of Director candidates that will be interviewed by myself and Maya, and we'll just be talking to them about giving them the opportunity to introduce themselves, talk about our network, and answer questions from me and Maya, and we'll be doing them one by one, and if you have any questions from the audience, please feel free to drop them in the chat or drop them in the question. Um, all right, so first up, we got we got a good number of candidates. What, what, what are your thoughts so far, Maya? I am ecstatic about our candidates this year. They're all phenomenal. They're all amazing i actually know a few of them personally so that's also amazing so i'm like super excited to introduce our candidates and like have them you know speak about themselves because they're all phenomenal and i wish we could take them all <laughs> I, agree, I agree first up we have justin ayala justin what's going on with you hey can you hear me all right yes oh wonderful <laughs> Okay. Yes, you are perfect. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. This is my first time on SSTP Live. My name is Justin. As you heard before, I am a Northern California native, born and raised. I did my undergrad at UC Santa Cruz, where I studied biochemistry for a few years. And after a period of kind of struggling academically, I discovered SSTP while I was learning about the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. So what happened was I learned about how students at the UC Santa Cruz chapter were working on an initiative to decriminalize psychedelics in that city. It was so exciting for me because I never envisioned that happening, like students and city council members talking about psychedelics in such a like open way. Really exciting time. In the last few years, I've taken a leave from my work at UCSC to kind of recover, my work on my mental health, heal from a few things. And in that time, I've had the honor of working further with SSDP, so I helped organize our Psychedelic Symposium, which was an online event last summer, which was really amazing. I helped with the Keep Your Promise campaign, so I actually traveled to Washington, D.C., helped with the campaign, um, almost considered arrest, but actually got kind of scared. Um, and I actually helped uh, take photos instead. And that's actually a, a huge part of my life is I'm a photographer. I have all, close to 10 years of freelance experience, love art and all of that. Um, in the time since my UCSD days, I've also worked at MAPS, uh, as part of the MDMA training team. I've also volunteered with Chakruna for a few months, and I currently am really exciting, uh, doing really exciting work with Fireside Project, which is a psychedelic harm reduction phone line where basically anyone who's tripping on psychedelics or is processing a past trip can call. Um, I'm bringing a lot of really exciting skills to the table. I am a really emotionally grounded person that really wants to support others. I come from a diverse background. I have multiple you know, racial identities I'll talk about later. And I just, I'm so excited to meet you all. So thank you for listening today. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Am I, you want yes. to pick up the first so, question, please? Justin, what would make you a good director? <laughs> okay, thanks, Maya. So, so like I said, I bring a lot to the table. I have a background in science. I have a lot of industry knowledge with the psychedelic community. So working with pharmaceutical kind of spaces, but also being really critical of like the medical industrial complex, looking how people are like profiting and also possibly appropriating cultures. I'm really critical of that while also acknowledging like the therapeutic potential of these uh, medicines. I'm also really focused on social issues. So I, uh, because I come from a background where, you know, there are, have been a lot of experiences with violence and learning about like the process of healing intergenerational trauma, that makes me really kind of sensitive to uh, what people might be struggling with, what kind of solutions might be in, uh, needed in society, and how those solutions can be implemented in like effective, equitable, and just ways. I'm also someone who's very willing to look at myself critically, look at the privileges I hold, uh, being a, a, a like uh, cisgender man, uh, being white adjacent, like I'm really open to like the critiques and using my privilege. And I also want to work with people who want to use their privilege as well. Um, I also provide, or I, I come with a lot of like administrative skills. So I've worked with, you know, communications. I've been a public speaker for years uh, with the EC admission system. Uh, I've been able to work with people across multiple time zones. 
uh, I have an international perspective, one, because of my uh, background, and also because I've just been working with like the COVID era uh, virtual psychedelic space, which is just very like, you know, always looking at those hours. <laughs> and yeah, I could probably say more, but I think that's two minutes. How, how am I doing, Jake? <laughs> Uh, you actually hit my uh, minute Thanks. 37. Uh, I'm actually proud of you guys just for that one. That's good. That's good. No, that's a really great answer. So um, you honestly kind of touched on this a bit in your intro in the last question, but um, what unique traits? Yeah, do you definitely. So I, I would love to share about, about that. I, I shared a little bit about, you know, I'm, the, I'm a photographer, right? So I, the, this skill came, you know, mm -hmm. since high school, I was starting freelance work back then. Um, but I didn't really like want to make that a, a a lifelong thing for myself until I started engaging with social issues uh, during the Trump administration. And I almost actually wanted to become a war photographer. And it was like a really intense transition period for me because I was studying biochemistry. I knew it was like lucrative and everything, but it was something where I was like, I can't look away from, you know, all these injustices that are happening with, with mass incarceration, with, with uh, military cruelties that are happening around the world. I wanted to, a way to engage with that. So, it, it, I had to decide, like, I'm not going to risk my life, but there's ways I can, like, express myself creatively. And actually, that was the path that, like, kind of led me to um, this unique space of, like, combining art and science. And I actually wanted to share a few photos. I don't know if I could turn this around. Yeah, so I, so for, for a few years, I actually worked with a DJ collective in Santa Cruz. Uh, that's Daniel Caesar there. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I took all of these. Yeah, so... So I love music, right? And like this is, I actually worked with this DJ collective for uh, about three years. And I just really learned about, you know, the kind of joy of, of, uh, of music and, and art. And um, I, I really love, you know, you know, one of the other board of directors, Raiden is a really talented DJ. And I just like, I love that intersection between like social justice and, and joy and the power of joy, the power of love, the power of creativity. That's mm -hmm. really what brings me and uh, in the last few seconds I have, I, I, I'll just, you know, mention again, like, as someone who struggled with, like, mental mental health stuff, and, like, I just really bring that, you know, kind of, like, capacity to hold hard emotions yeah. uh, to the Thank you for that, Justin. No, I, I completely, I completely agree with you. Having the, um, using the experience that you have to apply it in a way that you're not trying to, like, you know, yeah. go in a lane that you're not really familiar with and utilizing that, I think that's a really good skill set as someone who's trying to learn to really be a leader. So I like that. Uh, Maya, what's uh, okay. let's go with the last so, question. I'm let you ask kind of in the same breath as what we were, what you just said, Justin, like, what are three initiatives that you would like to bring to SSDP or you would like for us to work on or that you're passionate about? You're Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so I'll kind of go off the last point I was making, like the, the, the capacity of art and community to provide spaces for healing. I, I am thinking a lot about how in the last few years I've encountered other students who have experienced, you know, the death of, of uh, pe uh, people passing from overdose deaths in their community. And I, I've seen like the grief, you know, the grief and the, the, the challenge of organizing, you know, using your intellect to think strategically and critically about these issues while also really having this like pain, right? I, I want to create uh, an initiative to cater to the like the mental health needs of our organizers, of our activists, of, our, of the students that work with us. And I want to bring um, kind of that sensitivity I've learned from Fireside Project, you know, working with people in some of the most vulnerable times of their lives uh, while they're tripping has really taught me to see like, you know, there is a need for collectively, like our, 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 our minds are really going through it in the last few years. And we need, we need that opportunity. It doesn't need to be psychedelics, but it could be, you know, meditation, music, just talking. <laughs> Another uh, initiative I definitely want to see is working with art as a fundraising tool. Uh, when I was at MAPS, I saw that there was a really uh, interesting uh, art fundraiser that they did. And I want to kind of like take that, um, both the technology that they use, but also just the idea of like using art, centering art, and making that kind of at the forefront of our fundraising strategy. Maybe not at the forefront, but just part of it. Mm. The third one. 
Ah, yeah, so definitely, oh, I only have a few more seconds. <laughs> um, so definitely like, you know, centering indigenous voices in the psychedelic conversation. Um, I, when I was working with Chakruna, I was so, so inspired by how they put that at the center of the work that they do. And I really, really want to bring that forward. So I, I live in the East Bay, uh, Bay area, and you know, there's some scholars here that I really want to start talking to and seeing if I can bring them on. So yeah, that's me. Thanks. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. I really appreciate the questions. And yeah, feel free to DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. Yes, everybody, please follow and support Justin Ayala. Again, um, I think you're a very viable candidate. We're, we're excited to see what you bring to SSDP, man. Thank you so much. And we will have our next yes, we'll have our next guest up on stage. Let's get Amanda Ooh. from Yale up here. Yale in the house. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jacob. What's so going nice on, to see Amanda? you again. Likewise, likewise. Good, How are good. you this Yourself? semester? How are you this year, actually? Uh, wonderful. Quite busy. Just hyped to uh, get students like yourself very, very more like acclimated with SSDP and the drug policy work. And also, shout outs to Yale SSDP and the dope that work y'all been doing right? this semester. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah, for real. Y'all killing it right now. You and Jason. So... Real quickly, give a quick intro of yourself, who you are, yeah, and for then sure. we'll jump into the So questions. my name's okay. Amanda. I'm a current junior at Yale uh, studying psychology. I'm the current president of our SSDP chapter. I've been involved with SSDP since 2019 in my freshman year. I first became interested in SSDP when, unfortunately, my freshman year, one of my close friends got roofied at a off-campus party, and I just felt so hopeless and just so like I don't know what to do I'm a freshman I wasn't even 18 at the time and I was like I just really don't know what to do so I turned to SSDP as a way to learn about what to do and how to keep myself and my friends and our community safe so a lot of my efforts have been based around harm reduction helping the actual students on our campus feel safer every single day um, and I think that's it for my introduction I um, I hope the work that we've done speaks for itself and I'll elaborate more on the next couple of questions no, absolutely. That was a really great intro. And I think, um, I think again, people will definitely see a better insight of just what you just pre previously just touched on about like why the work that you're doing is so imperative, but also like why I think you stepping up in the board role is so important. That's so I'll kick off totally the first question, fine. Maya, if that's okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So why would you be a good director? Sure. Of so SSD I have board? a deep passion for harm reduction efforts and I have true, I truly believe I've dedicated my entire undergraduate career to helping pursue these efforts. I mean, I don't know how much, Jacob, you know about the story, but SSDP fully went under over COVID. I've been a member since 2019. Over COVID, we completely like, the Yale chapter disaffiliated. And then last spring, I kind of stepped into mm -hmm. the plate and was just like, we're gonna do our best, we're gonna restart it. And now we're a force on campus and we're literally hosting sold out events and everything. Um, and I can't do that without an incredible board and incredible members supporting me. But a lot of it has been, the persistence and dedication that I've put into it and that our team has put into it. So I feel that I'd be a good member of this team simply because of my persistence and inability to take no for an answer. <laughs> no, I can definitely attest to that. Cause even, I think even when I started like restarting, uh, looking at the chapters, I was just like, who is this from <laughs> Yale? Just like making mad noise has the IG active. So the fact that you took that initiative and was just, I'm like, who are you? And you're just like, hi Amanda. So the fact that you've gone so much so from just from COVID to actually like making so much noise on campus, I'm extremely proud of you. And I think uh, when people follow you in SSDPL, they'll start to see like a real big kind of leap that I think chapters have kind of um, stepped into past COVID. And they're like, yes, COVID might have slowed us down a little bit, but you are a, a, a spitting example of like how to actually come after that. Uh, Maya, yeah, please so Amanda, question, that kind of leads us into the second question of um, what unique traits do you have that you would be able to bring to the board? Sure. So I think I've highlighted my persistence. I think that's really just number one trait that kind of just embeds itself in every single aspect of every single thing I do. Um, I single-handedly restarted this chapter, and that goes from recruiting a incredibly brilliant, dedicated board and team and outreaching to every single corner of campus, um, literally advertising everywhere. Our team, every single corner on campus has now heard of SSDP at Yale. Uh, we really just don't give up here. Um, and now we're a force on campus and we've held sold out Narcan certification courses. We've held 
so many various projects over the past year since I, um, almost a year since I've grabbed the presidency in my hands. Um, and I'm really just so, so grateful for the opportunity to work on such a great, brilliant, dedicated team. Okay, okay. goal-oriented, <laughs> persistent, effective. I'm keeping like answers like short that. and simple. I think like the word... It. Yes, <laughs> short, sweet, <laughs> point. We love it. Yeah. Um, what are three initiatives you would like to see SSDP work on or that you would like to bring to the org? Um, yeah. For sure. So three things. First one, this semester in February, we started a new initiative on campus. We introduced nightcaps to the Yale community, which is a reusable drink spiking prevention lid. It's like a cup lid that you put over your drink whenever you're out. And it helps to prevent students and people from getting their drinks spiked. Mm -hmm. Our students have loved it. Really, they've just caught on to it. We hosted an event that was completely sold out, tickets sold out within a matter of days. We had almost 90 people show up at the event to the point where we had to add a second room for the event. It made the Yale Daily News. It was huge on campus. We still have a couple more nightcaps left to give out. We have 300. But our goal is for Yale to fund a nightcap for every single student on campus as we feel students have the right to protect themselves and know what's in their drink. So with that, I would love to somehow get Yale to bring this to other SSDB chapters. Our students have loved it so much. Drink spiking is not just a thing that affects the Ivy League. It's not just a thing that affects Yale, you know. Every single campus can benefit yes. from protecting themselves. Every single person should be able to protect themselves and what's in their drink. So definitely if I were on the if I were on the board, this would be number one thing, trying to get a nightcap into every single student's hands. It's really, it retails at $12 a unit in bulk. It comes down to like $6 to $4, depending on how many. It's not that large for universities in order to keep their students safe. It's really just like, to me, it seems like a mindless thing that the university should just get behind, you know, let's keep our students safe. So first and foremost, that's the number one thing. Second, um, a campus-wide, nationwide effort to host more Narcan certification courses. We hosted a Narcan certification course last semester that sold out within the span of a week. We didn't even advertise it, and it completely sold out, and students absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, there's such a need for these types of courses on campus, and I hope that we can use us as an example for how to lead these courses, maybe just get our board actually certified, and then we can, I don't know, somehow teach others and spirally from there. I'm not 100% on that idea yet, but somehow getting Narcan certification courses more accessible throughout all chapters. And then third of all, some sort of teaching program at local high schools. Unfortunately, there's a lot of students that come onto campus as a freshman and they don't know anything about drugs. They come from families where they just, they were just taught drugs are bad. And unfortunately, that's not the scenario here on campus college campuses. We can't just go around saying drugs are bad. It's really just not a good blanket statement. Instead, we should turn ourselves to education and we should start younger in high schools and really just plan lessons and go to local high schoolers and teach them before it's too late and before people are literally lying dead in the street, you know? So to sum it up, number one, nightcaps, introducing that to all campuses and helping prevent drink spiking, second, more Narcan certification courses, and third, teaching at local high schools. Perfect. Yeah. So that's my <laughs> that was great. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, uh, you've given us a really lot to consider in terms of the, the way you've gone about being active at your mm -hmm. chapter, but augmenting that through SSTP's board uh, membership. So I, uh, Maya, what, do you, what are your last thoughts? I mean, that all sounds amazing to me. And like I said, when we first started, we have some phenomenal <laughs> candidates this year. And so I am <laughs> because this is amazing. I'm loving everything I'm hearing. I mean, not the flex, but you know, she from my region. So, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Because we're from your region. I'm, not, I'm just saying, yo, like, <laughs> no, but Amanda, thank you so much. Oh, we got somebody, we got somebody cool. We got somebody kind of cool in here coming in. Somebody kind of cool coming in. <laughs> Sorry, my my dog wants to be a part of this live stream so bad. That's fine. Oh, oh, hey, there guys. she go. There she go. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> I miss you guys so much. I haven't seen Maya and Jacob since, like, the DC protest. I know. Oh, yeah, it's been a little minute. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no, amazing. Um, I'm I'm so excited.
excited to like even be running for board of directors and I was so happy with what Justin and Amanda said. I haven't met Amanda yet in person, but I think the work that you're doing with the Nightcaps is freaking phenomenal, Amanda. Like you are doing so amazing. And I think that's something that each college across the US needs to be doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thank you for that, Amanda. All right, so who are you, Miss Henna? Let me, get that, let me get that intro, let the folks know who you are. <laughs> so my name is Henna Malik. I was at the University of Florida's chapter. I graduated last year, so 2022. Um, I was with, uh, in the spring semester, I was vice president of communications. Um, basically, I helped reach out to people that were speaking at our GBMs, and I was in charge of making some presentations. And from there, I, I quickly grew in SSDP. So I met Jeremy Sharp. He is my favorite. I love him. Hi, Jeremy, if you're here. I don't know where he is. But <laughs> um, he introduced me to uh, Dan Safe, and me and him went to our first festival together to promote harm reduction. And there, I actually volunteered with SSDP and Dan Safe. From there, life-changing moment, I was like, this is what I want to do, study psychedelics. I had had some personal experience with um, being drugged. And after that, I was I, I just decided that I really want to make a difference in this community. And, um, you know, I want to do research and I want to promote harm reduction for students like me. Uh, and I think I'm one of the only Muslims in the psychedelic space. And I think that's so important to promote Islamic psychedelic use because a lot of people like me were really scared to use these substances because they have the guilt of religion. So that's something that I like promoting. Um, Right now I'm in grad school. I go to UWM, University of Wisconsin-Madison, in the Psychoactive Pharmaceutical Investigation Program, that is a mouthful. And I work for the Shakurna Institute and I love it there. And they are such amazing people, which I'll, I'll, I'll expand upon in a little bit. Okay, damn, you didn't, you didn't came up in the last couple of months we last seen you. <laughs> yeah. hey, congrats, congrats. Like, well, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We love Ooh, let me get my golf clap on. Thanks. That's so nice of you guys. Y'all are so sweet. <laughs> no, I mean, again, it's just, I guess, it's just proof of the how, like, how viable the network is just to yeah. see students like you yourself just making immediate strides right after school. So, um, first question: Why would you be a good director? Why would I be? I mean, have you seen me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yo, super gas, huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. No, this, is I, this is why I miss you. This is I miss this. <laughs> so I'm already in administration. Um, what, the work I do with Shakurna is I, I'm their social media coordinator, so I do a lot of like reaching out to you know people, fundraising, etc. And I had my introduction to that with SSDP when I was um, you know working with like the protest and like figuring that stuff out. So I already have a lot of experience with uh, administration. And I, I mentioned briefly that, you know, I'm a Muslim woman in the space and I think SSDP is super inclusive already. And I freaking love that. I think that's so important and every organization needs to be like that. Um, and so I think offering my perspective as a Muslim in this space, <laughs> offering this uh, perspective as a Muslim in this space is just kind of valuable because like I said, there's not many other Muslims and I want to be able to reach out to other students and encourage them to you know, work in this community if that's what they're passionate about. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much why I think I would be a good candidate. Yeah. Okay, very short and sweet, I like that. And honestly, I think your perspective would actually be super valuable. Uh, Cause you know, considering that, you know, there's a lot more Muslim around like acceptance around halal, CBD products and cannabis products. Okay. So I definitely want to see how you can definitely be in charge of being like, yo, Imam. <laughs> Like that would be I would be like a victory for us. Uh, Ma, you want to ask the next question? Yes, of course. So, Hannah, in the same breath, um, what are some of the unique traits that you bring? I know you've spoken about being Muslim in the space, and so do you want to expand on that? And like, what are some of the other traits that you can bring to SSDP to our network? Yeah, so I I definitely think I want to do work with students like one on one because when I was a student in this space, I was really scared and I didn't know where to do like where to go and what to do. And um, you know, the psychedelic pipeline is an amazing resource for this type of stuff and for promotion and go Gina for that. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, I either get two responses when I when I'm tabling for SSDP and I ask if they know what SDP is. They either know what SSDP is and they're super psyched about it or they don't know about it mm -hmm. and I wish that they did know about it and I feel like we do have a great media presence and um I really want to want to work with the students on you know 
how can they expand their knowledge and drug policy knowledge? And I feel like for me, being in grad school now, I'm studying the pharma uh, pharmaceuticals. Hello, <laughs> <Law> CBD. <laughs> um, sorry. I want to share my knowledge of drug policy and the pharmaceutical science that I'm learning about. So I think since I already have that knowledge, it's going to be really helpful being a board director. I'm already going to know how to navigate my way through all of this. And I'm also pretty close with some of the board members already, like Kat, uh, Maya, we haven't spoken in a while, but, and then there's Evan. So I, I kind of know what it is like to be on the board. And so I feel like since I already have a little bit of knowledge about that, it's going to help me some more. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right. So uh, what three initiatives or causes would you like to uh, bring on the SSDP board? Yeah, so expanding on my the last question, I think we would benefit more if we had more of a media presence. And so I think if we work on that, maybe I could collab with Justin because he is so good at like photography and stuff. Um, we can totally start getting like a TikTok going. And I know that's super Gen Z of me to say, but I think I think the more we expand on media, the more mm -hmm. students are gonna find out about this and they're gonna be like, I want to do this. Like this is what I'm passionate about and they're not gonna be afraid to take that step and pursue their goals. So I think uh, an initiative is I definitely wanna expand the media presence. I want to connect with other students, like I mentioned previously, and kind of offer my guidance. Like when I was an undergrad, I didn't know what curriculum I should be pursuing in order to do research. That's my end goal. I want to do laboratory research. And I was like, okay, do I do, psych do, I do psychology, biochemistry, chemistry, or biology? There's just so much. And it's overwhelming as a student. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I want to create kind of like a, a pipeline to counsel students on, hey, what classes should I be doing? What programs should I pr be pursuing? And kind of like a way to help them connect with, you know, grad school and say like, okay, this is a good program for you to maybe pursue. So I think that'd be a really good option for us to do. And then another uh, initiative that I'd like to work on is maybe having these open circles, like once a month to talk about integration and psychedelics and just things that we want to share together, um, making it like a safe space for students that aren't really like comfortable sharing with their parents or their other loved ones but they might feel comfortable sharing it with people that are already in the field so um i mean from shakruna i'm getting a lot of inspiration from shakruna we do that a lot where we offer like queer integration circles and um it's a great place for queer people to open up about their psychedelic use and i think a lot of people in the bipoc community and just in general would benefit from that especially students so yeah. that's kind of the initiatives that i'd like to see and like to help um create amazing all right perfect perfect my any last thoughts no, just, I can't say this enough. I'm just so ecstatic about all of the candidates that we have because everyone just brings such a unique perspective. Um, and like I said, I wish we could have you all. So, amazing. Agreed, agreed. No, and you are a, you are, you're headed to very like stellar places, honestly. I think yeah. you have a lot going for yourself and I'm really excited what you, what you do with the board, mm -hmm. what you're on. So, um, We'll see. We'll see what's good by the end of this. Sarah. Thanks, sir. There good luck. Go. How are you today, Sarah? Good. How are you guys? Good. Exhausted, but happy. <laughs> um, really excited to have you on as, as a board candidate. Honestly, I'm just extremely proud of your growth as someone who's been in my region since I first started. And Quick introduction, honestly, for the folks who don't know you and the really dope stuff that you do in at Columbia and beyond. Currently a member of the board of directors, serving, um, finishing up someone's position. I came in as an alternate in December 2021, so that's why I'm rerunning for my own full term, hopefully. Um, uh, I got involved with SSDP like, right out of high school with my uh, college chapter. I was active as a chapter member since I've been... Here at Columbia, I've been um, uh, active on the board and I'm and, and trying to, to, to get a group out here. Um, it's been an interesting time, but I'm very active with the local decrim group here, um, part of the work that we're doing. Um, I believe we still have a lobby day coming up. Actually, it's in two weeks uh, here for the decrim building. So I was happy to be part of the group that helped with that. Um, I don't even know where to begin with Oakland Community College. Like, I, I just, I was so. Uh, I kind of got exposed to SSTP and what the war on drugs was and how awful that was without really knowing that it was like a systematic thing or that like somehow like this, this punishment for, for using marijuana or for someone like I had a friend who overdosed and when I tried to get him help, um, 
we I was suspended and like or actually like he he was expelled and he was put in jail and like it was just so strange because I definitely was at the time super um I don't want to call myself naive because you should be able to go for help and so that's um what SSTP stands for but um um I just I don't know I have like so much love and so much passion for this organization and no matter what happens I'm going to be an SSTP for life so here we are um I, I want to say quickly on the board of directors uh I I been mostly active with the chapter networking collective and i'm like hoping and i feel very lucky that i got involved with ssdp like prior to the pandemic when we were still doing in-person stuff and we still had like our the last conference we went to was my first conference so um i know i'm a little ahead of the game but i think like I i'm really excited to start doing in-person things again and seeing a bunch of chapters in one space and so the next conference is really really what i'm what i'm looking forward to the most um yeah so you want to ask your questions I can do the first question. Yeah, go ahead, Maya, go ahead. You kick off the first question. Yes. So in that same breath, um, what would make you, Sarah, a good director? And I know you kind of got the inside scoop because you're already on the board. So please tell us more. Um, I'm super passionate. I feel like when I, it feels so weird sitting here selling myself, but that's what about being a candidate's all about. But I, um, uh, I feel like I offer a lot of passion and direction sometimes. I think that when I set myself on something, I get very like goal oriented and trying to, to think of like how, how I can make this happen, how we can get there and trying to, to follow in those little steps. Um, I, I'm just super passionate. I, I think um, there's another candidate here, Amanda. Uh, the whole persistence game, you, you girl, you're rocking it out there at Yale SSCP. I don't know if I haven't, but that, that game at my chapter level since, um, since, since I was at OCC, but um I, um, I, I hate to like bring this like situation up, but I just, uh, at, at that action, I'm, I'm looking forward to more direct actions. I'm kind of jumping ahead here on the, on the game, but I, I see myself doing, um, bringing a lot to, to making, um, future direct action happen and being successful. So nice. That seems pretty clear cut to me. Um, what you need, I mean, I kind of already know this question, but this question is for the audience. What unique tricks do you bring to the table as part of the SSDP board? I'd actually love to know what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you after you answer. After I answer? Yeah. Okay. Unique traits? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I got a big personality. I'm very honest. Um, I, I, well, I can be loud and proud. I can also be quiet and very anxious and nervous. I think that on the same level as everyone else, I, I kind of just want to um, acknowledge that everyone is going through something. We've all been through some pain. There's a reason that we're here for this mission. And I I don't know if that actually does make me different from any other SSDP members. Like this is a group of people who understand the war on drugs and the punishment from it. And I think that um, I just see myself working well with SSDP years. I don't have much more to say that. Okay. Perfect, perfect. My next question, please. Yes. We're on the third question? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Sorry, I lost track. Um, so, Sarah, what are three initiatives or causes you'd like to see SSDP work on or the board or both? <laughs> In stuff in person stuff i'm really hoping that next year we have a conference like i, I swear to god because I, I know everyone here like knows that congress is coming up in like five days and it's weird that it's like a one day thing but my first congress ever like i got to meet all the board directors they were switching from table to table and it was so cool and yeah. I, I that again um i i know that like ssdp is a really powerful organization and it, the, it's it's hard to comprehend just how much the pandemic has really hurt us and not having that that connection um i the two other three of the board directors here i only met them because of like our direct action that's like one of the very few in-person things we've had so that's just like front and center very general like i want to make as many things as accessible in person as we can um as second the chapter networking collective uh that i've been working on with with genie i want our general no program to be really digestible i'm hoping that a lot of the things that were said earlier about communication about how to access certain life-saving tools or just like general information is something that we definitely have all these resources for but we haven't um had a very successful like accessible module driven like, like just say no program like i think like 20 people or less than that have completed it ever so i'm really really hoping um that we that we get that straightened up and then um 
again, just onto like chapter materials. I'm hoping that uh, in the meantime, before we have like an in-person conference that we continue to have chapters, just um, having uh, better, better access to in that it doesn't have to be in person, but like direct conversation, those chapter networking collective meetings where you can just like show up in a space on Zoom and ask what you're figuring out. Because I know one of the biggest challenges for me when I was like organizing is like, what the hell do you do? <laughs> You've never organized before. Mm -hmm. um, so like you want to maybe host like a movie or this, this and that. And it took me like the longest time to realize like, oh, make a Google form, get a roster, like these things that might seem so easy to us after being seasoned for a while. But um, I want to, to help make resources to get SSMP chapters off quickly and as efficiently and as like strong rock stars as possible. Mm -hmm. so I appreciate that, sir. I like that answer. I really like that answer. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. This, again, this is this this gonna be. Oh, what did you, what did you think that's what I'm saying. We got some amazing people. I know. Like, it's really difficult. Um. Like I want to say that I. This is a weird place to be. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, um, I think it's a. I think it's a way to just like makes you kind of reassess like how you can actually go about what you learned and what you yeah. kind of want to impart. So I'm really proud of you for taking a moment to like step back into this and be like, all right, here's what I am. Here's what I can do, but also have a vision for what you want to see SSDP kind of augment and give that same experience to future SSD peers. So now nah, again, I always appreciate your perspective, Sarah. You're, you're, you're raw, you're authentic as, as it can be, but um, thank you so much. Uh, you can, uh, you can drop off and then we'll follow up with you by the end of this. You said, you said, dude, that you had ideas for what, was that what it was? What? <laughs> you said you were going to tell me after I gave my answer. <laughs> oh, oh, the three unique traits about you. It was funny. I want, I want to hear the affirmations. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're persistent, effective, and uh, you're authentic. Like I told you before, like one of the things, like, one of the things when I first met you was just like, again, hearing about you and then trying to meet you and trying to really figure out yeah. what you wanted to do. And again, uh, I never wanted to hinder your passion I always felt like again you your heart was always in the right place you just didn't have the right people around you so to see you have come this far to being on the front of Rolling Stone out of the mess and really just again taking initiative how you how you've done I'm really proud of you especially as a regional coordinator thank you yes I want to yes I I know for the longest time I didn't know what you looked like and then I met you <laughs> yeah that's no, all good all good, <laughs> all good. And I, I, again I appreciate your growth I appreciate your sacrifices that you've done thus far for the movement and um yeah. excited to see how this is going to go for the board say uh Maya any last thoughts um no I don't have any last thoughts just thank you so much for being here Sarah and looking forward to chatting with you more okay yes. perfect thank you Sarah <laughs> what about Laura this is going to be the friendliest election ever oh for real and shout out to Laura good oh. too for real <laughs> all right so I received Maya Seals' responses to her questions, um, okay. and so I can right. read these off. And then our last candidate is Ben. So, okay, perfect. So here's Maya Seals' responses. Um, for the first question, why? would Maya still be a good director? She says, I think I would be a good director because my passion for cultural humility, um, desire for solidarity with the needs of all community members, and because I want to help SSDP become more intersectional. That is a very strong answer. Okay. Um, so what are some unique traits that Maya still brings? Um, she says, I think some of the unique traits I bring derive from my experience in research design, which I think will translate well to creating strategy. As well, I think my advocacy work and the work I do to understand issues um, that affect the trans community will be very valuable in helping to create a more intersectional SSDP. In the same breath, part of this is my work with Fireside Project. Okay, another Firesider. Um, supporting the trans community. My experience there has shown me that self and individualized care can only go so far. We are in need of community care as well. Amazing. I mean, you're selling me. Okay. <laughs> so the last question is, what are some board goals or like causes you would like to see the organization or board pursue. So number one 
is increasing access to harm reduction education and resources. Number two, continuing to focus on abolition and can I read? Okay. Yes, that says abolition. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> okay, continuing to focus on abolition and advocating for repairing the harm caused by the war on drugs as an, in, as an adjunct to the interests of capitalists already presents in legalization movements. I feel like that was me. I read that poorly. That was not my seal. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> and number three, Fighting queer phobia in legislation and culture. Say it again for the people in the back. These were very strong answers, Maya Seal. I know you're out here working hard, so you can't join the live, but I love the responses. That's great. We appreciate you, Maya, for providing, you know, some type of answers or some type of uh, presence here, even yeah. though you are at work. So kudos to you. Thank you, Maya. And, and thank honestly, you for coming to DC too, by the way. Yeah, you and from Maya still was in DC for the action day, and I got the pleasure of meeting her and like amazing, phenomenal. Also, I love a I love a Maya. I'm a Maya, love another Maya. So <laughs> amazing person, phenomenal work being done. And I definitely encourage folks in the network to reach out to her and just get to know her more and stuff like that because they're doing amazing work. Hello. What's going on, Ben? Hello. 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 Already. Um, can I begin the introduction? Yes, please. Please introduce yourself. Yes. All right. Perfect. Hi, my name is Ben Graham. I use he, him pronouns. I'm currently a junior at San Ramon Valley High School in Danville, California. So I'm from the Bay. Um, I'm currently not affiliated with um, any chapter right now because I am a, a junior in high school. There's no... Um, chapters available for high schoolers near me right now, but I'm in the process of becoming an ambassador. I plan on continuing to be an ambassador, but I'm also exploring the option of joining the UC Berkeley chapter because that's the closest for me. Mm -hmm. um, I became interested in harm reduction um, from working in East Oakland, which I'll touch on later on with the other questions, but just seeing the tangible effects of the lack of harm reduction policies um, in East Oakland and other areas outside of that. Um, was what really brought me into looking into harm reduction policies and the war on drugs in general. And I furthered my interest um, by conducting my research thesis for my AP Lang class on the war on drugs. So I learned the history about the war on drugs and how it's affecting the United States today. I focused on the criminal justice aspect of it and the mass incarceration aspect. Um, and then after that, I joined um, SSDP. So I'm here now. Amazing. Love that. Love that, Ben. Mai, go ahead, pick up the first question, please. Yes. So in that same breath of all the amazing work you're doing, Ben, what would make you a good director? Yeah. So um, I work administratively already. Um, following adverse medical issues um, that my dad had, he had cancer, and so he was unable to work. He owns his own small business. Um, I had to kind of take over his um, his job and his work. So... I focus more on um, like the actual tangible, like lifting the heavy materials because he's a machinist, so everything like that. And then I also worked administratively. I got his company um, government certified for contracting and then handled day-to-day -day communications between material suppliers and myself and handled, managed teams and entire assembly lines to um, make sure that everything was running effectively and getting um, products to the consumers and the people that contract we contract jobs to. Um, and so that has built a lot of my leadership and uh, administrative abilities that I think will be able to translate really well into a board of directors position, which is a leadership and administrative position in the organization. Um, so even though I'm a high schooler, I have these administra I have an administrative background. Um, and on that I have leadership in other um, aspects. I am the debate captain, also the mock trial captain. So I have worked on leadership in those and also focusing on being able to effectively communicate with others. I think that's something that's incredibly important, important especially with something that's so stigmatized, being able to effectively articulate um, what the issues and opinions are so you can um, influence more people. Um, so I think that's 
mainly why I would be a good director, along with providing um, a unique perspective, which I think is going to be touched on um, with the unique characteristic questions. But just to kind of go over it, um, I'm a high schooler. Um, the majority of the people that are, I think almost everyone except me, are college postgrad. Mm -hmm. So it's a unique perspective that I don't think SSDP has had on the board of directors before, um, or at least in a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be unique for me in my application. He, uh, I mean, I'm impressed. He had a two for one special. Like, that, yeah. <laughs> that was good, Maya. That was good. That was that, really good. That was really good. And also, I'm a debate nerd. I debated in middle school and all through our high school. So you are speaking to my soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah same, same. No. Okay. Perfect. Honestly, we'll, we'll honestly jump into the last question. Honestly, what are three initiatives or causes you think you would be, uh, you would like to see uh, worked on with with regards to SSDP and being on the board? Yeah, for sure. So I think first, just coming from my perspective as a high schooler, I want to see more high school outreach. Um, so to start off, unfortunately, my school un, um, unfortunately experienced an overdose death last year. And that I knew um, got a lot of people very um, upset, outraged and um, about the entire um, reason behind it, because it was absolutely preventable. It was um, fentanyl laced um, drugs that were uh, that caused the overdose. And it's the fact that there wasn't um, effective measures in place like drug checking that I know that SD SSDP advocates for um, that caused those barriers to where someone that my age, a 16 year old overdosed, um, which I, it's entirely preventable. So I think that's a major reason why I want to see it extend into high schools because it's such a tragedy to see people my age um, lose their lives over something that um, is stigmatized. And that's the only reason why they had to lose their lives because drug checking would have been an effective way to make sure that that person didn't have to lose their life. But um, on top of that, it took a lot of time and research for me personally to find an organization that helps with harm reduction. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I found Students for Sensible Drug Policy, but um, I have, uh, I've found that it's hard for younger students, um, especially high schoolers that, who are passionate about harm reduction, being able to get tangibly and pragmatically involved in the organization. And so I think expanding um, into high schoolers um, would be able to broaden our sphere of influence, educate more people, and all, overall make it more safe for people because we all know that abstinence planning doesn't work. You have to make sure that you're accounting for people because they are going to be using drugs regardless if you tell them they shouldn't or not. Mm -hmm. So just making sure that it's safe for them to use drugs and that they know methods in which how to safely trip or safely use drugs or check the drugs. And I think that by broadening our sphere of influence to high schoolers, it's going to keep um, people working for SSDP longer, like I plan on. Um, second, sorry, that was kind of long-winded. Um, opening chapters in conservative areas or campuses, mm -hmm. I think more liberal and accepting of harm reduction um, on college campuses, even if they're in conservative areas, and they'd be willing to expand our message. And so, um, especially in places that haven't been exposed to harm reduction policies that are primarily going to be conservative. I think we do a lot of really great work in places that are more liberal and accepting. I know that the candidate from Yale did a lot of great work in um, Yale, which is a very liberal and accepting place, but I want to see more work done in places that it's harder to break the barrier. And then third, I want to increase knowledge campaigns. I know that um, some of the other candidates um, touched on this with like, um, increasing knowledge campaigns like on online spaces. Um, I, I had it written down. Sorry, um, I cut out. I, I know that um, some other people talked about like expanding onto TikTok, which is something that, you know, as a Gen Zer, um, I'm very familiar with. I know the ins and outs of TikTok. So I would be more than willing with helping with the media with that as well. Also increasing our Instagram presence and outreach. And then uh, moving away from online spaces, just hosting like local forums. Mm -hmm. I know that for me personally, getting knowledge on this is something um, that I have to look online for. Whereas if I were to be able to go to local forums or something like that, I would be able to get knowledge and actually get one-on-one um, -on -one, um, introduction to um, harm reduction policy policies and things of that nature. No, so, yeah. Ben, you have given like more than spectacular answers. And I think um, you've echoed a message that a lot of people have said in the last couple of years about including younger, because uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned 
something earlier about abstinence hasn't worked. We've tried everything except being honest and offering the tangible mm -hmm. resources necessary to keep students alive. So your last answer was like really just chef's kiss. Man. I really liked it. <laughs> Maya? Thank you. I mean, I, I love it. I love seeing younger, like we already work with the young people, but seeing someone in high school, like seek out our organization and learn more about it and just be so passionate, just warms my heart because I really feel like we have to start younger. The only other high schooler I've ever known was from Colorado and now he's like getting his PhD. Um, and he's been with SSDP for probably as long as I have, which is about 10 years. And so looking forward to your journey. Um, but yeah, your answer is amazing. And I can't say this enough, but we have some heavy hitters this year. So I'm excited to see what happens. No, I'm really excited to work. I'm really excited to work with you, uh, Ben, to see what you have, your future really holds. And regardless of whether you make the board or not, I really want to make sure I help like yeah. the perspective on really ensuring that youth have actually the <laughs> tools and the messaging necessary. And your initiatives, honestly, like that's really pushing the envelope. I like yeah. that. I really like that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Perfect. Greg, thank you so much for your question. I really think it's an important question that needs to be asked. So I want to tell you that when I started UC, or when I started SSDP uh, with the UCSC chapter in 2019, I started right before the pandemic, like literally a month. Within a month, we were already in lockdown. So I witnessed, you know, our chapter having to pivot from being in person to existing entirely online for a very long time. I am familiar with the challenges of this situation, and I can really relate to what your situation is, uh, basically wanting to be effective, effectively, be an effective leader in the war on drugs while not working in person. I'm really excited that you asked this question because it's kind of representative of the kind of organizing that I've been seeing in the last few years and the power of that kind of organizing. So when I worked with MAPS, with Chakruna, and with the California Online Event Planning Committee, the SSDP committee, uh, all of that was online. Like we would meet in Zoom, we would create spaces for ourselves to connect and strategize. And that's the kind of work I want to keep expanding upon and building upon. And I need people like you basically who are doing it all the time. You are someone who is seeing directly what the potential of being an online student is. Now, when I was, Working with the Keep Your Promise campaign, I also basically had to do a lot of fundraising and a lot of logistical support entirely through my laptop and through my phone too. So I'm thinking that as a student who's working online, you can definitely help other chapters with their initiatives. We need people like you who are able to effectively use the technology that we have to interface with people who are doing in-person meetings or in-person events. It's so, it's so important. I've been seeing all the potential for like education too. Uh, like I mentioned before, Chakruna and MAPS, like they're doing a lot of uh, education that's just provided entirely online. It's just really great stuff. I'm also thinking that online students, you know, you're in a unique position to connect with other online students. I know that you're starting, you're trying to start a chapter where you're at. I think that's really exciting for me because it makes me think that you are pooling a lot of talent. So once you, you know, you're in these classes and everything, if you can find people who are interested in our cause, uh, we need that. We need that kind of like online mentality because we live in an era where that kind of mentality is so needed. Society has just transitioned to so much online work. So your, your insights are going to be really important and I really hope to work with you in the future. So please elect me. <laughs> I appreciate your question again. Thank you. All right, all right, Maya, um, closing thoughts. That I, I mean, you, everyone saw it. Um, we have our work cut out for us. We have some amazing candidates and I am definitely looking forward to seeing just what happens. And regardless if 
folks don't make it to the board or not, I definitely want to stay in touch with people and just continuing to shower them with support so that they can continue to do the work that they're doing in their communities because it's so, so important. And I love to see it. I'm just... <laughs> Makes no, sense. likewise. I, I, I definitely want to echo your messaging to see it's the full, um, it's the really full extent of like the network and seeing how people have taken just small little interactions and utilize that mm -hmm. to build some kind of careers, make new connections, and kind of really discover more about themselves. So I'm really liking this real crop of new stu new students and new uh, advocates in this space. So I'm, I'm hyped. Yeah. All right, please, uh, audience members, if you have any questions, we'll answer them. But if not, we're going to close this up in the next minute or so. But uh, please follow SSDP, donate to us, support us, and please support our local can our, our candidates uh, any way cheaper possible. My name is Jacob Plowden. This is my co-host, Maya Tatum. Stay sensible, y'all. Peace. Bye. Bye-bye.